Hey, welcome back, Visions fans. Ready Player Well here. Today we're reviewing the second character as part of the Final Fantasy XV collab released last Wednesday. It's Prompto. He's a unit given out for free. Obviously, still going to spend to build him up to max, but let's jump into the review right now. It's pretty standard. I'm going to go through the character overview, my report card, and stat analysis about him, some general thoughts that kind of encapsulate everything about the uh, presentation, and then a class of job overview to go over the abilities, and then finally, the vision card espers and weapons. The weapons one is one to really look out for toward the end here that uh, he most notably I would pair him. So without further ado, we'll jump into things. From the character overview standpoint, brand new dark unit. He's got three jobs that uh, one of them is unique to him, where it's the Crown's Guard Marksman, followed by the Sniper and then Assassin. He wields guns with the hat, cloth, and accessory. Move of three, jump of one. Really standard stuff as kind of a base overall unit. In terms of resistances, it's not bad. He's got a minus 5% to magic, which there's enough magic resistance in this game to be built up that that's not a terrible thing to bounce back from. But other than that, some you know 5%, 15% to missiles, really noteworthy given the current meta as well. And then finally for status ailments, he is resistant to blind as well as uh, doom, it looks like. So uh, overall, it could be better for status effect resistances but uh, not the worst and i say that because you are going to want a 97 faith them we're going to get into why so from a report card standpoint is effective hp and for again quick redefinition of that it's not just what his hp is there's a calculation where you essentially uh modify the hp by what they have for defense spirit resistances all the above so it's not really what is their hp but more how much damage does it take to kill them it's a more accurate measure of their survivability so from that perspective uh, effective hp for prompto is c it's really not good and quite honestly it should be almost even lower uh but we'll get into a little bit more he is an evasion unit kind of a spoiler for later but uh physical hp c plus he's a little bit more bulky against the physical uh physical attacks as we saw with the minus five percent magic resistance and that puts him at a c minus for uh magic uh, hp if you will but as primary stat i'm giving him a b this is really hard to quantify because obviously you look at attack stats here and he's at 443 and i just picked two comps in terms of fred and summer lilith he is a little bit higher than them in terms of attack he's got some buffs that also uh increase his attack stats so he does innately start out a little bit higher but there's a whole bunch of other things that come into play there in terms of defense penetration and missile resist penetration and perils yada yada that uh, and then you're also comparing them to gunners not necessarily the top end attack stat in the game so as far as gunners go it's pretty good um and that's okay that it's not the biggest we're going to get into why he's obviously he's more utility based than he is damage based agility a minus he's actually like kind of near the top he does have ways to essentially increase his agility as part of his uh cooldown rotation which is pretty nice and there's obviously some passives and some vision cards that will jack that up as well that we'll uh, look at pretty soon accuracy he's actually horrible c minus way below average which is kind of surprising for a missile unit that being said he does have a turn one potential buff that will give him uh, 30 percent accuracy and if that's the case that 30 percent actually does close the gap put him closer to the top in terms of what characters typically can start out with sucks that ace is an ability to get there but uh 30 percent's no joke to to buff himself so there's some upside there this that's not nearly as bad as it could be in terms of evasion uh he's a b plus i honestly think he could be be better and we're going to circle back on effective hp in a second here so if you're looking at uh characters total evasion if you will and it's important to consider the 35 percent luck that you'd put on them from a vision card because everyone's got different luck stats uh in terms of what their base is versus their board long story short this is what the the current list of urs and some of the mr shakes out to be Prompto's on the higher end of the game. I wouldn't say he's the best, but he is definitely like double digits lower than like Venera, 2B, Fred, a lot of the top end characters. So he is just a smidge of a tier lower in terms of evasion, which honestly kind of sucks. And I'm going to tell you why. If you look at the other evasion characters ahead of them, a lot of them have way more survivability potential than just their evasion. So for Zazan, he's got the double re-raise. For Ketone, she's a drain force, you know, type user that everyone uses her for so she can regenerate health. 2B has a physical shield. Elena has courage. Lara Croft has an ability uh, and Elena does too that increases their uh, evasion by 25%. Prompto's got none of that. Last one's got Mirage. Like, I can keep going down this list. Prompto's got none of that. He's got no courage, no re-raise, no shields, no nothing. Like literally nothing. So the fact that he's kind of already lower than them on the evasion scale of things and doesn't necessarily have some survivability to compensate does make him relatively squishy. He might be the most glass candidate character that I've ever reviewed quite frankly uh from a movement perspective totally average move of three jump of one no real ways for him to potentially change that passives i'm giving him a b plus because he does have a handful that are good some of them are kind of redundant but they're not bad so i'll give him that his counter abilities i'm giving him an a because he has reflex that we'll see soon the overall kit's a b plus it's a little bit different than what you might typically think of from a gunner unit or a missile user 
user, which I think is kind of interesting. The final grade I'm giving him is a B minus though, because he does fit really well into things, but he but he is definitely more situational than some other characters because of how squishy he is. You're gonna really have to make sure that you're on smaller maps where the dark cast can just kill things almost immediately. Because if that's not the case, Prompto is really gonna struggle overall. One last thing to touch upon, and I'm going to see that I'm going to say this more in a second. He does end up on a fairly decent spot on the crit rate overall list, where critical rate skills directly off of your dexterity stat. A lot of people do have passives that can jack up that crit rate too. So this current list is actually incomplete. I haven't uh, added in all the potential passives, but just to get an idea of things for myself and show some proof, Prompto is a little bit on the higher side than say top 20% of critical hit users. So that's not something to necessarily worry about when you're considering these builds. So my general thoughts: he's more of a support than a DPS, quite honestly, and I say that from uh, a really interesting like utility perspective and utility is kind of defined as things that you can't really quantify there are ways that the battle is influenced in non-damage kind of ways potentially but the first thing is his status effects uh, he's got an incredible amount of access to status effects and here's a list of all of them across the main job and the sub job so on his main job alone he has four different status effects he's got paralyzed blind slow and poison on the limit break and then he's got access to some others uh, additional paralyzed ones on the sub jobs those are non-damaging attacks though, so you typically doesn't use those in auto but you could use it for pve and then he does have access to disable on one of the sub jobs as well so total of five different status effects to abuse which is why i say keep him at 97 faith it's uh, quite honestly his hp is so low even if you add him at 50 or 70 faith he's probably still going to get one shot by most things anyway so you might as well go the 97 faith to get the higher chance to proc these status effects so that's a big part of his kit in terms of support and utility where he can status effect a majority of the different characters he does have a 25 percent dark imperil which obviously not not only helps his damage but really does amplify the damage of the team and makes so you don't know you have to rely on Black Rose Elena's uh, Limit Break, which you can only use once, or Dwayne using his. He also has an Attract Target ability, which is kind of like the Black Rose Elena Vision card, where it's an AoE that will hit everyone for 121% modifier, and it'll drag them together. So that's really awesome, obviously, for Black Rose Elena to follow up on. It doesn't give them any AoE resistance down like her attack does, but it still groups them together. And, and long story of things, that's a, a really valuable piece of utility, not one that you see very often in the kits of characters. Uh, none, quite frankly. Another one, he does have a break that's an Attack, Magic, defense and spirit break here's the problem there's no damage attached to it so i don't think he uses it in auto i haven't gotten him leveled up to, to uh, try it yet but just based on how the ai typically works unless he's got a special code uh, non-damaging attacks typically don't get prioritized as an offensive ability so uh, if it uses ap and doesn't do damage they don't typically use it so i don't know if he uses this but obviously really good for pve upside he also has an AP decrease ability where essentially you can cleave an enemy's AP down, which is awesome. It's kind of one of those, again, utility uh, based things. And then he does have a dispel bit off the sniper sub job, which is really valuable to get rid of haste. He can dispel hate off certain targets. So really good overall. So that's why I say, even though he doesn't do a ton of damage, he does a ton of different utility based things, which obviously influence the team fight. And, um, he's got no missile resistance penetration, which I think is noteworthy. The only access to that would be if you had the, the diamond cloak cloth, which has the 15%. Other than that, uh, just straight up regular. He is a very squishy character, as we mentioned and went in depth on. Decent AP economy, because one of his passives uh, essentially affects how much AP he can generate and what he uses. So overall, on the lower side of AP cost too, so he can he can churn things out rather rather quickly. He does have easy range plus three access between the passive and one of the first turn buffs you're going to potentially use. So that's pretty cool. He can get up to that high. Uh, he could have up to 75% defense penetration because of his trust mastery, the Valiant gun, as well as his, uh, on the sniper sub job, the target ability. So if you have really high defensive unit, that's a potential build to kind of go for to increase his damage, obviously. He does have a higher end crit potential, as we talked about. And finally, one thing that I really took me a little while to like sink in and remember, um, he does more than enough damage to synergize with what the Dark Caster already does. Uh, and the Piercer ability in particular is absolutely nutty. I didn't even realize how good it was upon first glance, but I'll get to that in a second. The point is the dark cast between Dwayne and Black Rose Lana. It's been so long since I've seen that meta. Uh, it's really only been like a month, but time flies, you know, feels like forever. Uh, I forgot just how much damage they do. So you don't need Prompto to come out here and be this like a massive damage dealer because Dwayne and Black Rose Lana already do so much. All he has to do is really just like the bare minimum contribution to either do some extra ship damage or finish off a low health target. So he does that job perfectly. When we're getting into the class job overview, so the passive abilities, they're not bad. A lot of them overlap, though. There's uh, range plus one, and he's got range plus two, so you 
you wouldn't do both with some overlap there. He has an increased acquired AP down here, but that's also part of his customized scope passive. So some overlap there, you wouldn't have both on unless it's, you know, strategizing for something specific uh, in terms of PVE content. So other than that, it's really just looking at the evasion rate buff, which you basically need if you are trying to uh, tap into his evasion. He, he takes a pretty big hit if you unequip that. And obviously customized arsenal I like a lot because the agility uh, of 12%, as well as the missile attack for that extra damage, although the luck one down here will get make him a smidge more evasive so there's a lot of different ways to play with this uh so they're, they're good overall they amplify what he wants to do for the counter abilities it's an a from my grading earlier because he's got the reflex it's basically reflex it's a uh, 200 percent to uh avoid all incoming physical or magical damage so other than that counter smoke's obviously niche but great for countering uh, units accuracy that's really it but reflex you're always going to have on in terms of the main job this is where things are really interesting so he has the access to the four different status effects here he's got two buffs one of them is a self buff one of them is a teammate buff so that is pretty cool that you can ai uh you know tune with them a little bit in terms of uh, where you want him to go directionally one of them as i mentioned earlier gives him the accuracy of 30 and also increases agility of 25 percent the other one is an increased attack of 40 percent to allies and increases range plus one for himself and allies so that's really beneficial if you're you know sitting next to Dwayne and you can give the, him that buff as well as yourself that's a it's a big influence on the fight one of the things uh, that I really really slept on to start was this piercer ability here where not only does the ability itself give him 40 percent defense penetration which as we which as we mentioned earlier he has 35 between his weapon and his trust mastery but this ability alone can also get him up to 75 if he's using it and the one real big caveat here is the increase in modifier of 60 percent so this becomes a 225 percent modifier ability if they're affected by one of the status effects or the dark and peril that's nuts because you have obviously a couple different ways to dark and peril an enemy the fact that this becomes a 225 percent modifier is incredibly huge and obviously if they're status affected get that same benefit which is why i say do the 97 percent faith because it, you really want to do everything you can to status affect them the rest of these pretty self-explanatory in terms of what they do uh dark res down chance to inflict paralyze uh, decrease ET. This is basically the same attack that uh, Titus has. So good main job, and honestly, great sub job too. So Gravisphere is really, really cool. That it's that ability that is a massive AOE that will will shrink them together uh, into a closer tight knit group. The Star Shell is that big, big break that I was talking about, but that doesn't have damage on. So great freaking ability, but it's just not going to get used as far as I can tell. Cursing Bullet's not bad. That's also that decrease AB AP ability. So if I'm playing with Prompto, I'm probably doing this sub job uh, with the main job. Just because there's so much extra utility here on as well not that the sniper sub job is bad it certainly has its upside as well just really strategic to what you want to do the two things in particular here for me arm shot so having that access to disable really big the second one is dispel spread where you can dispel all buffs and haste to targets so both these abilities also really incredibly uh high on the utility end of things so keep this in mind for a sub job too and then finally assassin this is not bad considering it's got uh, slash attacks on it where if you are trying to do some pve content build up some chains if you find an opportunity where he does have access to two different kinds of defense breaks here one of them is 50 percent when attacked from behind the other is 30 percent all the time so having both of those is still pretty great and this one also technically does have paralyze and poison as status effects so you can still kind of flex those the uh the last thing the limit break i'm actually a little bit underwhelmed by this and when i first looked at it i'm like I feel like I've seen this before. And the answer is because I have. It's like basically Venera's limit break. It's almost the same thing. Both roughly 200% damage, both 67% to uh, inflict poison. Both of them are triple hits. Both of them are 43 AP. The big differences are obviously their range, where Prompto's is more of a diamond and Venera is more limited to this cross shape. And then his is a height of two and hers is a height of one. So he does have some more versatility to using it. But overall, like unless you're going for some chains, this is actually going to break most dark slash chains, which is what the dark cast really did well at where a lot of them have double hits and triple hits uh sure you might be able to maintain the dark chain but you're going to break that slash chain if he uses this so it's okay and, and poison's not the greatest status effect it's not bad but um it's whatever he can't be a perfect character the tmr this one's not a bad uh, one either uh decent enough stats for a tmr the accuracy is definitely on the higher end of things the crit rate's nice but you can get that in a lot of other places as well. The ability itself, I think, is kind of eh. The decreased chance of being targeted is nice and obviously will help to, you know, keep enemies away from you. The restore CT of 250, just for perspective, that's half of what Rob's TMR does, the Keen Blade. So 250 is pretty good, but it's not like you're going to get an immediate turn like Rob's does in the broad scheme of things. So not a bad TMR, but probably not my favorite. I can think of a lot of other ones that I 
probably want to use. And finally, is trust mastery, uh, increased attack 10%, and then the defense penetration of 15, which you mentioned earlier. So the notable vision cards, and eh, this is where like it's not great, and I really I mean that like a lot of characters that come out, they're really amplified by some of the vision cards that are there. And don't get me wrong, the, the dark vision cards are some of the best in the game. I just don't know if any of them really tailor to what Prompto wants to do in particular. So to me, Maidens of the Rose is a must if you're going for that evasion build, whether it's on him or whether it's on Dwayne or if you have Venera as well. Obviously, there's a lot of things to increase attack and you need the 35% luck. But the dexterity of 35% will also help to make him more accurate. So that's a, a net win overall. Omega is actually really hard for me to put on him as well, if only because uh, it's got some spirit for some survivability. The three agility and the eight percent agility, I think, are really big to making sure that he is just a speedy, like a speedy dude to kind of get two potential buffs off or a TMR buff off and still be able to just run circles around the enemy. But uh, this is obviously a good card. It also gives him the bulk that he might need with the HP of ten percent to self and HP of thirteen percent to party. So given how squishy he is, this, this is actually going to help him a lot to bring that health pool up. Uh, D. Bolas is kind of a classic choice. This is really just if you're going for the countering light comps where you really want to jack up his damage potential. And then finally, Demon Shimmer, I think is a really good card on him, provided you have Maidens of the Rose on someone else. The reason being, this will help, again, give him agility, which is pretty great to help the return rotation. But this gives him personally 15% luck, which is separate from the party luck. But this also gives 10% evasion rate extra, which is separate than the luck. Luck is a different stat than evasion rate. So this is going to put him him in that upper upper echelon of evade units which i think he really needs this obviously does some great things too for the unit resistance as well as the critical rate up which is basically going to mean he's going to crit everything every time so that's really cool i like this card a lot on him provided maidens is on someone else when we're looking at notable espers the two evade espers definitely come to mind tetra sulfate and demon shimmer in particular because of the innate synergies on that board in terms of offensive output but i also like demon wall and omega demon wall although a slower esper is okay because he's got a ton of agility but also because demon wall does have a bunch of slash resist or dark and light resist that you can potentially play with so uh that not recommended but it's an, a fairly decent option omega is my other good one just because it does have a lot of nodes that he likes but really and truly if you're going for more missile oriented ones these two mr uh, espers chocobo and curl definitely have some synergistic tendon you know synergistic attributes to help him in terms of missile attack up and crit rate up and crit damage up so overall you could definitely tailor them to fit as well but uh being a gunner there's not a lot of great espers to really put on them overall in the game from a weapon optimization standpoint this is one of like the most mind-boggling things i've thought about for a gunner and the thing that's weird about this because most gunners because they're so accurate innately whether it's because of a dexterity stat or because they have a guaranteed hit like sharpshoot in their kit most of them you don't have to worry about the aim builds prompto is not the case the gun customization is really going to tailor to who you're trying to attack so valiant is a really good gun form but it's not definitively the best by any stretch the attack stat tends to be a little bit lower obviously it's got the 14 percent aim and the 16 percent critical on those respective builds and the defense penetration so that's really if you're going for those really high defense uh, or defense stat units but as we've seen that's not always the case so if that isn't the case uh, i think lara's dual pistols is a really really good weapon for him where the stats overall on the aim build although the the attack stats a little bit lower than the average gun you get 15 percent accuracy 12 percent crit rate which is not a massive decrease from the valiant like 16 and 12 roughly in the same ballpark but this will increase his crit rate an additional 15 and then the crit damage of 20 so there's going to be a different kind of attack uh in the equation where it's not going to be defense penetration it'll be a higher crit damage modifier which is going to hit a lot because it's going to get a lot of critical hits brazil gethy is still a legitimate option too though uh definitely a little bit on the lower side in terms of the accuracy compared to what the others offer but way more on the offensive potency side so to me if you're going brazil gethy it's because you're going for the assault build and the missile attack is obviously more more consistent modifier than the crit damage which although is high is probably not a hundred percent of the time uh, and then also these are two that i've never considered uh that i think are really interesting moonless gun is rare use tmr i am super intrigued because number one basic attack still gives that 15 percent chance to blind which i think is kind of interesting to play with but number two it does have some evasion on here as well where if you are trying to get really creative with the tmrs you can put on him i don't think this is a bad potential option the second thing this is um Oh, it's the water gunner, the MR unit. What's her name? I'll edit it later in the video. Uh, I don't exactly know how this works, but if you look at the passive here, the decreased chance to be targeted was six. I, 
I think I, this is where I'm confused. Every character typically starts the battle off at zero hate. And so if you go negative, it doesn't go negative. It still stays at zero. So that's why I'm, I'm a little bit confused on how that passive actually works in procs. That being said, if someone knows about it, I think this is also a decent gun considering the accuracy and that passive where it has some synergy with what its TMR does if you're trying to keep him off the you know LOS of the enemy. And then the third and final one, uh, Vega. I have never looked at this gun in my life in the game. I because again most gunner units don't need it but and it's an sr gun so it's on the lower side of things so it's actually kind of cheap to make if you want but 22 accuracy on this gun and 13 missile modifiers not much lower than the other modifiers here right so it's roughly equivalent so although you take a little bit of a hit on the attack stat 22 percent accuracy is definitely more material than what the others have to offer if you don't want to put the alexandrite ring or something else on instead so i've never crafted this gun but like i'm actually going to look into it now because Prompto actually needs the accuracy help. So last thing here, Prompto's wristband is coming out, I think, next week in the Trials of Reckoning event. It's one of the new things being rolled out. This in particular is, I, I like it. I don't love it. I think the really cool thing about this overall is that Human Killer as the ability doesn't stack with anything else you can put on equipment. So you can't overlap this modifier with anything on your equipment side of things. So I think if you're going for like maxing potential offensive output, particularly for someone like Prompto, who is a little bit of a glass cannon, given how squishy he is, the crit avoid is nice where it maybe doesn't, overkill him but the spirit is the real shining star here at 16 spirit that's a really high amount of spirit uh, overall not a bad accessory it definitely has its place so that's prompto in a nutshell this was a really interesting one to review i had to sleep on it for a couple days because i was really trying to figure out the guts of this character particularly because i don't have him built up to 120 yet so i haven't been able to do the normal amount of testing that i can do for other characters so that's it in a nutshell hopefully this is informative and i uh, look forward to doing some more content soon i have aranea coming out tomorrow and i'll be doing some map analysis and some guild work tier rankings once again i'll also be coming i'll also be coming up with a top five worst units in war of the visions i'm actually really excited to do that just to kind of actually talk trash about characters for once because anyone who watches my videos i i always sound pretty optimistic about these guys so that's it i'll see you all soon thanks for watching